Hey everyone, so I am currently stuck in my neighborhood because of Hurricane Sandy. None of the New York subways are working, and I can't go to work all week, so I figured I would um, use this as, as an excuse to finally catch up on some video tutorials I've been meaning to do. Um, the first one I'm going to do is how to machine applique. I did a picture tutorial on my DeviantArt account, but I feel like that wasn't necessarily super clear, so I'm going to make a video version of it. So I haven't bothered to clean up my area at all, but bear with me. Here are some basic supplies we're going to need. Um, scissors, there's a pen, just a regular pen. Um, this is the fabric we're going to be stitching onto. If you're using a thin fabric, like this is just regular quilter's cotton, I would recommend putting some fusible interfacing on the other side, just um, because it'll make less It'll make things less horrible later, basically. Um, this is the fabric we're going to be stitching with. It's just a scrap. Um, and then we've got our heat and bond and an iron. Um, about the heat and bond really quick, this is the one that I use. It's the purple one, which is called light, and which is meant for sewing. Um, there's also the red one, which is a little more heavy duty, and that's a non-sewable one. Um, I haven't had really good experience with it sticking even when you don't sew, but um, it's not good for sewing through. It makes the needle really gummy, so use this one. Bear with me because I have to do this all one-handed. The first thing you're going to do is take your sheet of heat and bond, and you're going to place it with the shiny side down on the back side of the fabric that you want to make your shape in to sew onto the blue fabric. Um, as far as the iron settings go, you don't want to make your iron too hot, and you definitely you definitely do not want to use steam. This is the steam setting on my iron. It is off. Um, if you steam heat and bond, it gets kind of bubbly. If you make it too hot, it also gets kind of bubbly. So just iron that down. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a time limit you're supposed to do this for. Um, I just usually iron it for, I don't know, about... 15 seconds to 30 seconds, depending on how much I feel like it needs to be stuck down. Um, once that's stuck down, turn the iron off, and the next thing we're going to do is grab our pen here. Um, usually I have a stencil that I use for whatever shape, but since this is just a tutorial, I'm just going to make some basic shapes. Um, you can draw right on this, the pen won't bleed through. We'll do a square circle. Um, well actually, let's make that circle like a donut so we can talk about inside and outside curves later. And then we'll do a really bad looking star. Um, so basically all you're going to do after that is cut these shapes out. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so here we have those three beautiful shapes that I made on the pink fabric. So right now one side is the white paper and the other side is the fabric. The next thing you're going to do, which I'm going to attempt to do one-handed, is peel the paper backing away. And this should leave you with um, the adhesive stuck to the pink fabric. So we'll just do that to the rest of them. Now obviously when you place these on your fabric, you're going to want to put them with the shiny side that has the adhesive down. Um, and then place them however you want to. As far as the iron settings go for this, um, I usually make the iron pretty hot. Um, and you can use steam, um, especially for things like fleece and foul. I find the steam kind of helps the heat get through them and down to the adhesive so that it sticks. Um, since this is just regular cotton, it's not really a problem. So you just want to place your iron on top of your shape and just make sure you go over it a few times. Um, especially for these really thin fabrics, it really doesn't take much to get it to stick. And there we go. All all stuck down. So next we get to the sewing part. Okay, so this is my sewing machine. It's just a regular home sewing machine. Um, this is a really old model. I've had it about seven years. It was top of line when I got it, but now you can get this similar one for like 
$150-$200. It's just a, a regular Brother home sewing machine. Um, the foot that you're going to want to use, you're going to want to get um, a foot that has an open or clear part in the middle. I don't know if the camera's really focusing on this. But um, it'll just, it'll make it a lot easier um, for you to see what you're doing later. And then as far as thread goes, you're going to want to get um, embroidery thread, which is, it's thinner and it's shinier. And I mean machine embroidery thread, obviously not hand embroidery thread. Um, I've got all sorts of colors up here since I do this a lot. Um, brand doesn't really seem to matter. You can really use any brand and it just works fine. Now we need to talk about what kind of stitch we're going to use. Um, we're just going to use a regular zigzag stitch, which I think pretty much even the most basic home sewing machine can do. And all you need to do is adjust the width of it and how far apart the stitches are. Um, you can look up how to do that in your sewing machine manual. They all do it. So now we're ready to get started. Um, this camera is trolling me and it only likes to focus if I hold it really far away. So um, hopefully you guys will be able to actually see what I'm doing. Um, it's also really picking up a lot of light too. Um, so don't mind that other square there. That's the one from, oh, there's my cat. That's the one from when I made that really blurry video that I'm not going to show anybody. Hey, get out of here. Um, so the key thing here is you want to have your needle come down to the right, the very, very right of the pink fabric and then it'll go into the pink fabric so you really want to get into the blue as little as possible and then you're just gonna go forward like that um, this might not be the best straight line I've ever done since I'm Trying to do it one handed and hold the camera far away. Um, when you get to the corner, you're just going to turn the whole fabric 90 degrees and put the foot back down, and then you just keep on going. I'm going to start working on the star, so we're going to talk about points and inside corners. Um, I think I will do the inside corner first. Um, I have taped some <laughs> fabric over the lights on my sewing machine to just kind of diffuse it because I know it was super, super bright last time. So we're going to start off just like we're doing a straight line um, with the needle going oops, just into the blue fabric. And we're going to go straight down until we hit the corner. Um, and then what do you do? So I'm going to try to explain this. It's going to be blurry. I apologize. You actually are going to go two or three stitches beyond the corner. And then you're going to turn your fabric until you're going straight down the other side. And then you just keep going forward. Now, when you get to the point, that's another story. Okay, so for points. You're going to stitch all the way to the point, And then you're going to turn the fabric. You're going to do one stitch that goes into the pink. And then when it goes back towards the blue, it should come out right, right at the point. And you're going to turn the fabric again. This stitch should, this stitch will probably end up partially in the blue here, but very close to the pink. And then you turn the fabric again, and you should be right back towards going down a straight line. I'll do that again when I get to the other point, which is going to be really hard because I drew a terrible star and it's super pointy. So inside corner, 
go a few stitches past, turn, and continue down. Now this point's super thin, so I'm going all the way to the point, turn the fabric, use my one stitch to cover the very point, pivot it again so it comes down to the the left side of the point and then when I turn it I am once again oh my fabric fell off the light sorry it got really bright going down a straight line again okay so aside from points doing curves was the thing I was most worried about when I started doing this I'm going to start with the outside curve of this ring so you can start anywhere, um, and we're going to line it up just like we have been so that the needle comes down in the fabric, and when it goes down again it's just over the edge of the pink. Now the trick to this is just to take it really slow, which probably is even slower than I'm doing, and you just have to very slowly pivot the fabric as it's getting pulled through. Um, there may come a point where you can't really pivot. You can lift the foot and turn the fabric a little bit then. That's totally, totally okay. Um, especially if you're doing a lot of curving. Sometimes it gets tough to pivot it as much as you want to. Um, so that is what that looks like. That's actually not too bad considering um, I'm doing it one-handed. Okay, so for the inside curve, um, we're starting up the same way we always do. And it's, it's basically just like the outside curve. Um, you just pivot it a little bit as you go along. Just, you know, go go slow. Take your time. I think it's a little bit easier with this one to end up like way out in the blue fabric. semi-complete circle with our inside curve and outside curve. So those are really just some super basic basics. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. I forgot to mention about the thread you use for the bobbin. You don't want to use the thin, shiny embroidery thread for the bobbin. That's just a waste of thread. Um, I use just regular, just regular thread. Um, regular cotton thread. Um, usually I try to use a color that's close to the color I'm stitching with. Um, but really, um, in reality, I only use black or white. So I use a dark color, I use black. If I use a light color, I use white. Um, they do make special bobbin fill thread for machine embroidery, but I don't really find it necessary. It's just another thing to spend money on. Um, so that's my opinion on that. But um, if anyone has any questions, like I said, just go ahead and ask. Uh, I'm sorry the video is so blurry. There's no like macro setting or anything on this camera, so we're just kind of kind of stuck with it how it is. But um, hopefully that helped you guys out, and um, I will see you again soon. Okay, so here are some things that I've done applique on. Um, I'm sure most of you guys know I make these, but these are a little like claim purses with. Um, I mean, I use all sorts of different fabrics. I use mixed fabrics for these because really you can you can heat and bond anything. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. You can heat and bond vinyl if you put your mind to it. BMO plushies in progress. These guys also have applique on them. So I also pulled out some of my costumes to show you guys more examples. This is my Reese from the webcomic Tea House. Um, all of this is appliqued, and then there's this crazy stuff on the sleeves. It's a little wrinkly because it's been jammed in my closet. Underneath, this is a more simple one. 
This is uh, Kuronosuke from Kuragehime. Just a, a heart. It was definitely a lot easier. And then the really big one. I don't even know if I can get this in the camera. This is my cape for Lelouch from Code Geass. Um, it's freaking huge. But all the, the vines are all appliqued, and then there's these really big wings. So that is an example of some applique that I've done.